Yes, you have now entered the Twilight Zone, and it's not tomato puree on her forehead. Oh no. Every move that you make is recorded in the air. I don't know. What could be full of nutrients and could be wasted otherwise, but could be collected and used as a life-giving tool? Well, this girl has a number of ideas about that. The most obvious, and the reason why I'm showing her, is because, well, what she has all over her face. Red sun rises. Blood has been spilled this night. You know, she looks normal enough. She looks okay. Uh, you know, average person, nice eyes. And then there's this here. And yes, it is blood. And it's not merely blood like, hey, you've gotten blood from somewhere, which is pretty weird already. It's more like, hey, this is my period blood. Gabrielle Sledgel from Canada was scared to tell her mum that she got her first period at the age of 13. She became sexually active in her teens and had her monthly periods as a kind of little dread. However, all of that changed in 2014 when she discovered spirituality and yoga. Kind of reminds me of Rhodes. All these really respectable people say it. Our menstrual blood is the most valuable thing in this whole multiverse. I just learned that from another video I was listening to. And we think it's garbage that we should get away from our menstrual blood. But actually, it's that menstrual blood is the elixir of, of rejuvenating life. Thankfully, people who even paint their faces in blood usually aren't as far gone as Rose New Blueprint. She came across a post of a woman using her menstrual blood to paint. The idea of menstrual blood painting, a kind of artistic form, is not something terribly new. However, she looked into it and she got some interesting ideas. Using her blood as a artistic outlet and a method of keeping her skin fresh, she continues to use it for this purpose. She no longer dreads her monthly bleeding, and she claims now that it's her way of celebrating being a woman. Indeed. A lot of the article is essentially a feminist rant about how she felt ashamed and dirty and how this is a terrible imposition for society to impose upon women. And I suppose it is, really, but uh, it's also kind of her thing. It's a thing that she can get over. And now she's found a wacky way of drawing attention to herself and highlighting this issue. Instead of simply saying, hey, it's perfectly okay and it's perfectly natural. No problemo. Interestingly, at one point, she describes how she felt nausea changing a tampon and getting some blood on her hand. Um, I think of that and the other kind of cliched statements that she makes. The problem is not so much present generational people and people who, you know, think on fairly progressed terms compared to previous generations. I would say the problem is those previous generations who will never read her article, never see it on Facebook, or probably never see it on Facebook or pay much attention to it. And really what she's doing, as with so many other people with these stunts, is basically, well, simply preaching to the choir. Nice. At least she isn't like some people on the internet. The Egyptians knew that. That's what oral sex was all about. Right from the, fresh from the fruit, fruit picked right off the tree. Whoa. 